Ever wondered how real hackers train without getting caught? In this video, I am going to show you how to set up your own private hacking server. A complete lab environment where you can run scans, launch attacks, and break into machines legally, all from the safety of your own system. No sketchy networks, no risk to your real devices, it's just pure ethical hacking and we are gonna do it right. And if you skip even one step, you could accidentally open a door to your entire network. So I want you to pay very close attention because this setup is way more than just installing Kali Linux. Most beginners install Kali Linux on VirtualBox and think they're done. But real ethical hackers build isolated, controlled environments to stimulate real-world attacks safely. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your own private hacking lab where you can scan, exploit, and even reverse shell machines without touching the real internet or putting your network at risk. Today, you're building that a safe, legal, and powerful playground to sharpen your hacking skills without getting caught. Now, you've got two options to build your hack lab. Option one, repurpose an old PC and install Kali Linux or Parrot OS on it. Option two, use a virtual private server or that is also called VPS. You can use it offline like virtual or with internal networking only. For safety, I'm going virtual and will isolate it from the internet and enable internal attack vectors like DHCP, DNS spoofing, and more. Now that we have chosen the virtual route for safety and control, the next step is absolutely crucial because this is where most beginners unknowingly sabotage their own setup. See, it's not just about installing Kali on and launching some tools. The way your lab connects to the network can make or break everything. So if it is not properly isolated, even a single scan could spill out onto your real devices or worse, onto the public internet. That's right, one wrong setting and you could accidentally scan your own router, trigger alerts, or even knock your home network offline. Here's where most people mess up. They launch tools like Metasploit or Nmap on their home Wi-Fi. That's insanely risky and I do not recommend you do that. Hey, sorry to interrupt your video, but I've got a quick question. Are you interested in building a career in ethical hacking? We've partnered with EC Council to bring you the Certified Ethical Hacker or CEH Masterclass, and it's the perfect place to start. In this course, you'll learn step by step how to think and act like a hacker so you can protect organizations from cyber threats. You'll gain hands-on experience with industry standard hacking tools such as Nmap, Wireshark, Metasploit, Burp Suite, John the Ripper, Nikto, Aircrack NG, and many others. Master ethical hacking with AI-driven techniques to enhance your skills and always stay a step ahead. You'll explore techniques used in footprinting, scanning, enumeration, system hacking, malware analysis, sniffing, social engineering, and more. You'll also dive into advanced topics like web application attacks, wireless network security, cryptography, cloud security, and penetration testing methodology. Everything you need to pass the CEH certification exam and become a skilled ethical hacker. The CEH certification is a globally respected credential that validates your ability to identify and fix security vulnerabilities in networks and systems. It's ideal for anyone looking to become an ethical hacker, penetration tester, security analyst, or cybersecurity consultant. Cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing fields in tech, and ethical hackers are in huge demand. In fact, according to EC Council, the demand for ethical hackers has grown by over 40% in the past year alone, with penetration testing jobs being among the top five fastest growing roles in cybersecurity. Organizations across finance, healthcare, government, and tech are actively hiring CEH certified professionals to help defend against cyber threats. CEH certified professionals earn anywhere from $95,000 to $150,000 US dollars per year, and experienced professionals with advanced skills can earn $160,000 to over $200,000 annually, according to Glassdoor, Payscale, and CyberSeek. 
If you're ready to launch a high-impact, high-paying career in cybersecurity, this course is for you. We placed a link to the CEH course in the description area of this video. Enroll today and take the first step toward becoming a certified ethical hacker. Now, back to the video. So, now, enough theory. Let's fire up the machine and start building this hack lab from the ground up. We are talking real tools, real targets, and full control. So pay attention because every step here matters. We are going to use Kali Linux on a virtual machine and here's how to get everything set up. First, open up your browser and search for Get Kali. Click the first result and it will take you to Kali's official download page. From here, scroll down and download the Kali installer image under the installer section. There are other options too, but we are sticking with the recommended one. Next, head to the top menu and click pre-built VMs. These are ready to run Kali setups you can import straight into VirtualBox or VMware. Speaking of which, even though we saw VirtualBox listed there, I prefer grabbing it from the original source. Just search VirtualBox download, open the link provided by Oracle website, and grab the latest version of your system. Now that Kali is getting downloaded in the background, we need a second machine, something we can actually attack. And for that, we are heading to OneHub, a gold mine of intentionally vulnerable machines built for training and ethical hacking. I'm grabbing a box called Mr. Robot 1, inspired by the show, packed with real-world exploits, and perfect for testing our lab setup. Each project on one hub comes with full details, the author, system requirements, networking tips, and even walkthroughs if you get stuck. But don't rely on those just yet, because we are about to find and break into this machine ourselves. Now simply click the download mirror link and the file will begin downloading instantly. If your download stops midway or your system blocks it from starting, open the search bar and look for Windows Security, then go to Virus and Threat Protection, then Manage Settings under the Virus and Threat Protection Settings section. Here temporarily turn off Real-Time Protection it will surely resolve your issue. While our file is downloading, let's set up Kali. Click the new button in VirtualBox, type in any machine name you like, and choose where to save it. What about ISO file? Sure, you could attach it now, but I like keeping that secret weapon for later. Also, set the type of your machine to Linux. Next, set your RAM and virtual CPU count based on your PC's power and your need. Then, choose how much virtual hard disk space you want for the machine. And boom, now the setup has been completed. Select your freshly built machine, slam the start button, and VirtualBox will demand your Kali ISO. Point it to the file's location. Hit the mount and retry boot button and watch your virtual beast come alive. The Kali Linux installer is up. Choose graphical install and place through your language, location and keyboard setup. Let it mount and prep files in the background. Then comes the identity check. Lock in your username, set your domain name and forge a password no one could dream of cracking. Now the real test, partitioning. Pick guided. Use entire disk and channel all power into one partition. When it asks if you want to write changes, this is your point of no return. Hit yes and commit. Finally, pick your arsenal. Stick with the recommended loadout or craft your own toolkit. Once you confirm, the installer forges your system. Seconds later, boom, your hacking lab comes to life. Now, installation is done, time to prove that you are the rightful owner. Drop in your username and password like a secret agent unlocking classified intel. Boom, the Kali Linux desktop is live. That sleek dragon logo in the top left? Click it, and your entire arsenal of hacking tools unfolds before you. But hold up, we're not stopping here. Time to bring in our target. Head back to VirtualBox, hit the File tab, and from the drop-down, choose Import Appliance. 
a dialog box appears like a portal to your next mission. Feed it with the MrRobot1.ovf file we downloaded earlier. Click finish and just like that, our vulnerable machine is born. Right now, it's labeled VM. But trust me, we are giving it a name worthy of the chaos it's about to face. Open Kali, shut it down, and save the machine state so you can resume exactly where you left off. In VirtualBox, select the Kali machine, click the gear icon to open its settings, then go to the network tab. Change adapter 1 to internal network and assign any name, for example, dummy. Click OK to save the changes. Next, repeat the process for the second virtual machine. Rename it to something memorable here, we'll call it a robot. Then open its network tab. Set adapter 1 to internal network. Select the same internal network name, for example, dummy, and click OK to save the changes. Now, both machines are completely isolated from your host, meaning your main system stays safe. This also means you can start experimenting freely. Time to have some fun now. Next up, we are bringing our internal network, which is dummy. We are bringing it to life by giving it internet superpowers. To do that, we'll spin up our own DHCP server. First, pop open your search bar, type CMD and launch the command prompt. Now, we are going to sneak into the VirtualBox command center. For that matter, just type CD. Then in the codes, I want you to type this address and then hit enter. Once you are inside, run this powerhouse command. You can find these commands in the description. No worries, you can copy paste, all right? Here's what it's doing. If we talk about, you know, two hyphens and then network equals dummy, it tells VirtualBox which internal network we are configuring. And then the server IP, which is 10.38.1.1, it assigns the DHCP server its own address. And then there is lower IP and upper IP. It defines the IP range that will be handed out to machines in the network. So the net mask is 255.255.255.0. It sets the subnet mask. And then there is an enable option which flips the switch and brings the DHCP server online. Now your dummy network now automatically assigns IP addresses to connected virtual machines just like a real world LAN. Now let's fire up our Kali machine in VirtualBox just like we did before. This time our mission is to verify that the DHCP is configured correctly and is handing out IP addresses within our desired range. Booting Kali might take a moment, but once it's up, enter your password and click unlock. Next, open the terminal quickly using the shortcut, which is Control alt t and then inside the terminal type IPADDR. This command reveals detailed information about all network interfaces. Look closely, you should see that your Kali machine's IP address falls within the exact range we set in our DHCP configuration. This confirms that our internal network is alive and working perfectly. But let's push it further. Can this machine access anything outside the internal network? Let's find out. For that matter, you want to run this command ping 8.8.8.8 or use the IP address of another machine, you should get a network unreachable error. This is exactly what we want. It proves that Kali is isolated from the internet. By the way, this ping 8.8.8.8 is the Google's uh, DNS, default DNS, where we um, ping and get the response. So right now we are not getting any response. So now let's make sure it's also cut off from the host machine for that matter, switch back to your host system, open command prompt and type ipconfig. From the results, copy your host's IPv4 address, go back to Kali and try pinging that IP. So you write ping and then the IP address. Again, you should see destination host unreachable error. Perfect. Now 
This confirms our hack lab setup is fully isolated, meaning we can now perform tests safely without risking our host machine or internet connection. Now both of your virtual machines are locked inside their own private playground, completely invisible to your host PC and the outside world. This means you can push the limits, do anything, break things, and run those juicy penetration tests without worrying about any collateral damage. Think of it as a hacker's sandbox, a sealed off environment where every exploit, misconfig, or catastrophic meltdown stays trapped inside. No internet access, no accidental leaks, just pure consequence-free experimentation. Now, start the robot virtual machine in virtual box using the same process as before and wait for it to finish the boot up process, which may take a few minutes. Once it's running, its interface will appear as shown in the screenshot. Our objective at this stage is to gain access to this Mr. Robot machine so we can gather data from it, right? To proceed, switch back to your Kali Linux terminal. Here we will run the sudo nmap command that you see here. You can copy it from the description. Now let's break down this command, okay? So what it does, the sudo, as you already know, runs the command with administrative privileges, which is root uh, privileges, you can say. And then nmap, which is the network scanning tool we are using to discover hosts and services. And then uh, hyphen s, small s, and then the capital S, this performs a TCP SYN scan, also known as half open scan, which is faster and more stealthy than a full TCP connection scan. Then we have hyphen T4, which sets the scan speed template to aggressive, meaning it will scan faster, but still remain reasonably accurate. And then we have 10.38.1.110 hyphen 120, which is an IP address range that you can tell um, and this is the IP range that we are scanning. In our case, it covers all addresses from, uh, you know, 10.38.1.110 to 10.38.1.120 within the internal network. So when you press enter, you will be prompted to enter your system password. After doing so, the scan will start. This process will check each IP address in the range to identify which machines are active, which ports are open on those machines, which services might be running on those ports, which of course are our potential vulnerabilities. Once the scan finishes, you will see the results showing the IP addresses of the Mr. Robot virtual machine, along with the details of open ports and the services running on them. This information is crucial because it reveals possible entry points we can target for our attack. As we have got the IP addresses locked in, so fire up Firefox or literally any browser and slam that IP into the search bar. And bam, there it is, the login page starting right back at us. That's our very first vulnerability. Discovered without even scratching our host system. Boom, you just built your very own hacking lab, a private server to stimulate real world cyber attacks, safe, legal, and 100% under your control. This is the playground where elite hackers train and now it's yours. Okay, that's it from this video. If you enjoyed that little taste of digital lock picking, hit that like button like it owes you money, subscribe so you don't miss the next mission and ring the bell because we are just getting started. Until then, stay curious, stay safe and keep hacking your way to the truth.